Ninja Christmas Shoppers, it's Chris here from the Camera Store, and I have for you guys today the Canon PowerShot S100. Now, you know, in Canada, when we think about Christmas time, we think about the mall. So we're here at Chinook Mall today with a permit this time to shoot and try out this brand new camera. And uh, it is pretty cool. We'll see if it's something you might want on your Christmas tree list. And Santa's right there, so you can ask him for one yourself. Let's take a look and see if there's something we want to buy for Christmas. Ah. Okay, let's take this opportunity to try out the lens range on this camera here. Now the S100 is nice because unlike the S95, we've increased our zoom range from 3.8 times to 5 times zoom, so we get a little bit more longer reach, but also wider. This camera now has a 24mm wide angle, it's a welcome change for this camera series. Now we also get that great f2 aperture at that wide angle, it's beautiful. And we'll just try a shot here at the wide angle, shoot at f2. And you can see you get that beautiful thin depth of field and the background's completely gone, even though it's a 24 mil wide angle lens. However, one of the things that I don't like about the S100, we are getting stuck with a 5.9 minimum aperture at the telephoto range. And that means if I get back here a little bit and I zoom in, and I shoot at my tighter aperture here, I mean, I get the background sort of out of focus, but you can really recognize a lot in the background there. You're not getting that thin depth of field. I mean, I know it's hard to expect more than that from a camera this small, considering we've got a fairly large 1 over 1.7 chip. But uh, don't expect any super thin bokeh with the telephoto lenses on this camera. Now, one of the other great features that they've changed on the S100 is better video mode. We now get 1080p resolution, which is nice at 24 frames per second. And as we see here, we can do some pretty nice video with autofocusing. And at the same time, you'll notice the exposure is changing. Now, of course, there's no manual control on this kind of camera for video. But I do like that they added an ND filter. It's two stops, and it really helps you keep your shutter speeds where they should be, even when you got a lot of bright light. And of course, that works great for stills, too, when you want to shoot wide aperture. And one of the other great things about this video mode is we have super slow-mo. We can shoot 120 frames per second or 240 frames per second. But of course, we are going to lose tons of resolution if we do that. Still, a welcome change for video on this camera. And you can even optically zoom while using it. That's a nice touch, too. Good changes. Now, the S series of cameras from Canon have always been quite small cameras. And the S100 keeps that same small design as the S95. And it's got the same dial controls, which we loved on the S95. I mean, this ring in the front, even Leica shooters and, and hardcore film users enjoy using rings like this. Got a ring on the back as well. And when you're in manual mode, I love being able to see your exposure update live right on the screen. It's the easiest way to meter. I can simply adjust my rings, my aperture, my shutter speed until I like my exposure and take my shot. Now the S95 had kind of a slippery surface and they've gone with a new matte finish on this. So it's got a bit of a more uh, substantial grip to it. And then of course they've added the grippy thing. The grippy thing here, oh man, this grippy thing. For your fingers when you hold this tiny camera, we love the grippy thing. Damn. Yeah, baby. You got a good secure grip on the camera here. You never feel like it's going to drop, which is always so important on a small pocket camera like this. Did I mention we really like this grippy thing on the camera? One of the big changes for the Canon S100 is a brand new CMOS chip purpose built by Canon, 12 megapixels for this new camera. You have to remember the last time Canon made a CMOS sensor for a point and shoot, it was their SX1 and that camera did not perform very well in low light. But now with the new Digic 5 processor, Canon promises excellent low light characteristics out of this camera. Let's take some shots here as we go through higher ISOs so you can see what this camera does as it gets higher. Now Canon's also uh, gotten uh, pretty excited about this new sensor and processing engine, so they've now put in 6400 ISO as well on this camera. So we can now uh, really push the sensitivity if we need it. Now I expect the camera's gonna look pretty mushy at 6400, but it's nice to have it in a camera like this. You couple that with an F2 aperture at the wide end, and you got a camera that can shoot in very poor lighting conditions. I would say overall the image quality is looking very, very good. Color is staying nice and true. As we go higher to be expected, sharpness does drop and the photos do get a bit mushy. But all in all, beautiful results for a small point and shoot camera.
All right, now no digital camera is going to be complete without all the gadgetry and the new technology. And the S100's got a lot. Now they have added GPS, so they've joined the masses of digital cameras that have that feature. And Canon has kept their whole lineup of digital fun effects, things like vivid colors you can see here, or you know, selective color, black and white, nostalgic. We also had fun with the miniature effect here with our video. You can see they're playing at high speed. But keep in mind, most of these things are gimmicky, they're silly, and I hate them. Uh, but one of the other cool things about this camera that they can do with the new processor, the Digic 5 processor, is they've upped the frame rate, and that is very, very cool. We can shoot almost three frames per second. It's great for little bits of action, spurts of action, and it's great when you want to get follow-up shots. We're shooting a lot in low light here, and I found that often my second or third shot will be sharper than the shaky first shot, so I like that feature. You can even push above nine frames per second, but there's limitations. You can only shoot in JPEG, no RAW, things like that, and of course, no focusing. Still, some really nice features they've added on this camera. Now, I know you guys are always saying I talk about these cameras and I love them so much and where's the bad stuff? Well, I do have another complaint with the S100 here. The focusing speed's faster, but I expected it to be a lot faster. There is still a substantial delay when we're focusing and shooting. I don't know why cameras like Fuji and Sony can deliver almost instantaneous shooting and the Canon still can't. But you know, it's faster than the S95 noticeably. It's not terrible. I just wish it was faster on a camera like this. So, you know, the Canon S100 is generally an upgrade of the S95. I mean, nothing's revolutionary, nothing's been changed in a major way, but it just does everything the S95 does better. Better zoom range, it's faster focusing, it's got nicer video, you still get the raw capability, the manual controls that made this whole S-series camera famous, and uh, great same design, but much, much better grip. So all in all, a worthy upgrade, fantastic Christmas present. I want one myself. I know that Santa watches our videos, and I have been very good this year. So check out the brand new S100. It might be something that you want under your Christmas tree this year.